Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I am the Chief Digital Manager of Dataversity. We'd like to thank you for joining this Dataversity webinar, IT plus line of business, driving faster, deeper insights together, sponsored today by Altrix. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we'll be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. If you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag Dataversity. If you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. Just click the chat icon on the upper right-hand corner for that feature. And as always, we send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now, let me introduce to you our speakers for today, Tim Chandler, David Potts, Todd Talkington, and Raman Kaler. Tim is the Principal analyst, a Business Analyst at Marketo. He currently leads Marketo's BI and data solutions with, to deliver business and operational insight across all of the company's business teams. With global experience in both business and IT, Tim has worked on many complex BI data service deployments and developed sales and service application solutions for Cisco, Sun Microsystems, Hewlett Packard and Nortel Networks. David is a manager of solutions architecture with Amazon Web Services. He provides technical guidance, design advice, and thought leadership to some of the most successful AWS software partners on the planet. He, his deepest experience, expertise spans big data, security, storage, and software as a solution business applications. Over the last 15 years, he has brought an intense customer focus to challenging and deeply technical roles in multiple industries. He holds both a world record and has a number of patents. Todd is a senior technology partner at Tableau, and he has been in the high-tech industry for 15 years and has spent seven years managing technology relationships. At Tableau, Todd has focused on managing the relationships with Tableau technology partners. In this capacity, Todd has been able to become a thought leader in how Tableau technology partners can bring solutions to market that help Tableau customers better see and understand their data. Raman is an Alliance Marketing Manager at Altrix, where she focuses on defining strategy and executing programs for joint marketing efforts with key strategic partners. She currently focuses on partner marketing with efforts with Tableau, Amazon Web Services, Cladera, uh, Databricks, and Salesforce. And with that, let me turn it over to Raman and Tim to get us started. Hello and welcome. Hi there. Thank you for joining us today as we present IT plus line of business, driving deeper insights faster together. I'm Raman Taylor with Altrix and I'll be your host today. Today we have a great panel of speakers joining us from Amazon Web Services, Tableau, and of course, Marketo. We'll kick off the hour with David Potts, a Solutions Architecture Manager from AWS, and Todd Talkington, a Technology Partner Senior Manager with Tableau. David, Todd, and I will provide a quick overview of how Altrix, AWS, and Tableau can further your self-service analytics practice, and then we'll hand over the floor to Tim Chandler, our featured speaker for the day. As mentioned, Tim is heading up Marketo's BI and data solutions to deliver business and operational insights across all of the company's business teams. At the conclusion of Tim's presentation, we'll take Q&A from attendees. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. Altrix is a leading platform for self-service data analytics. It enables analysts to use a repeatable drag and drop workflow to easily prep, blend, and analyze all of their data, be it on-premise or in the cloud, as is the case with AWS. With Altrix, analysts can deploy and share their analytics at scale for deeper insights in hours, not weeks. All of this empowers analysts and line of business users to perform their own analytics, quickly process large volumes of data, and then output results to all popular formats, including Tableau, which we'll be discussing today. As you'll hear from Tim, Altrix makes it easy to perform analytics, but what's more, with Altrix, you can use the same workflow to enrich your data if need be. We have relationships with leading providers of third-party data so that you can augment your data with additional insight to create the perfect data set for analysis. Regarding our advanced analytics, the predictive capabilities are based on the language R. The tools require no coding expertise, but if you do have R programmers, they can customize these tools or can even create their own tools to be reused in Altrix. Our spatial analytics tools utilize data from TomTom to build trade areas based on drive times or other variables to do sophisticated geospatial analysis. Finally, Altrix makes it easy to share the business insights you produce. 
With the legacy approach, analytic apps and reports often have to be created in another environment or custom coded. With Alteryx, this step is simply added to the end of the workflow to enable reporting, output data for visualization, or create apps that allow business decision makers throughout your organization to customize and run their own analytics without having to create custom reports. And with that, I'd like to pass the floor over to David. All right, thanks for that, and thanks for passing me the, the virtual floor. Um, so uh, I'm David Potts, and um, uh, you know, that kind of filler slide says we're gonna do an, an AWS overview, but what we're really gonna do is we're gonna focus on um, one particular service, and that's Amazon Redshift. And um, I'm a big fan of Redshift. You know, it's fast, it's simple, uh, it scales to, to petabyte scale, and you can get started for less than $1,000 a terabyte per year. Um, so go ahead and click forward, please. So what is Redshift? Well, it's it's a relational data warehouse, you know, and um, it, it's something that uh, we recognize in the industry. You know, data warehouses aren't new, um, but uh, there were definitely um, uh, some pain points that customers came back to us with, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but if you think about it, you know, one of the great features of Amazon Redshift is that it's fully managed, right? So you don't have to uh, worry about getting it necessarily set up and do kind of the day-to-day -day undifferentiated heavy lifting of managing a data warehouse. Um, we offer options, so you can do um, SSD platforms or even HTD platforms, which are great for sequential clear queries, big block queries. It's massively parallel, so you can, you can farm out the processing to a, a number of compute nodes, and we'll look at that a little later. Um, and it can scale to petabytes. Uh, we have plenty of customers that are using Redshift at petabyte scale. Um, and all for that, all that for a, a reasonably low price. You know, get started, uh, 25 cents an hour, $1,000 a terabyte per year. So uh, go ahead and click forward, please. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's the bias data. That I've been doing this for a long time, um, you know. And uh, in the old days, you know, data warehousing was just kind of for the the those largest you know kind of global 2000 you know and data warehousing vendors would sell to central IT uh, they'd look for kind of multi-year commitments uh, multi-year deployments sometimes it would take that long to get it deployed and you'd have to cough up uh, sometimes millions of dollars um, to 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 get it set up and get it going uh, that's that's a little challenging um, for most of us uh, so. Uh, we took that feedback and um, you know used it to create the, the Amazon Redshift product. And in the old days, you know, because these systems were so expensive, uh, difficult to get, um, you know, we would often have to uh, leave data on the cutting room floor, right? You know, we could only have like a very small subset of data that we could look at because the systems were expensive and hard to get more. Um, go ahead and click forward. And what happened was. Um, you know, companies uh, found that the, it was leading to dark data. You know, we, we, we know from, from everything we've heard about big data, you know, big data, the, it's growing, the velocity, the volume, uh, and it's accelerating, frankly. Um, but um, because, you know, it was expensive to uh, pull in these data warehouses, um, you know, the, it, it led to a lot of dark data. And, you know, one of the things that, that I, I think the market missed in the past is that Small companies have big data too. You know, whether you're mobile, um, ad tech, uh, IoT devices generate tons of data. Uh, if you're into gaming, you know, they 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 track almost everything you do in there. Um, and because of these long cycles and the high cost, um, it, it really kind of stifled innovation. And you know, one of the great examples I like to give is you know the one of the best metrics for your agility as a business is how long it takes for you to have an idea in the shower and be able to test it out later that day. And you know, one customer that, that, that really kind of changed the game is Yelp. Um, so what they've done is they've, they've democratized their data services because they can experiment, and that allows them to come up with new ideas, uh, new functionality, and new value for their businesses. Um, go ahead and click forward, please. So what's great about Redshift? Um, you know, if I had to kind of drill it down uh, 10 times faster, 10 times cheaper, um, easy to provision, you know, you can get it going in just a few clicks. And, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily completely 
uh, replace the DBA, um, but uh, you sure can manage a lot more data um, using a managed service like this. And we allow you to easily leverage the tools on top of, of your big data platform uh, that you already know and love. So, so we have a great partner ecosystem um, and there's great tools that you can use to look at it. Uh, for example, Tableau uh, works very, very well with Redshift. Um, and then it, because it's a, a SaaS service, um, you know, you can build it in line with your process flow. So if you have data pipelines that you're putting together, um, you know, through an ingestion tool like Alteryx, um, you can easily connect that to Redshift. And pay as you go. You know, we, we, our customers tell us over and over that they only want to pay for what they use. And we support that um, through a lot of features, functionality, and a very um, uh, friendly on-demand um, pricing uh, uh, approach. Um, and it's managed availability, so, you know, no worries about um, necessarily, you know, learning difficult clustering technology and having to uh, maintain that. Uh, we provide that for you, as well as disaster recovery. Um, so a lot of great features there. Uh, go ahead and click forward. Um, uh, and, and don't necessarily take my word for it. Um, you know, we've had a lot of customers that have stood up and said, you know, we are really excited about Redshift. Uh, this is how it's changed our business. Um, FINRA, for example, um, you know, cut their cost of data warehousing um, by 70% um, by implementing uh, Amazon Redshift. And you can take a look at the website. We have a, a case study on that. Um, go ahead and click forward. And we have a huge ecosystem, too. So um, a, a, a tons of partners uh, integrate directly um, with Redshift. They see the value. Uh, customers see the value. Um, go ahead and click forward. So a little bit about architecture. Uh, we're not going to go super, super deep here, but I, I just want to give you a sense of um, what this looks like. So uh, Redshift is set up with what's known as a leader node, and that's what you're going to communicate if you're using a SQL client or a BI tool um, that you need to uh, contact Redshift. Uh, it stores the metadata. It, it'll do your query optimization, and then it coordinates the query execution through the compute nodes. And the compute nodes are sliced up, so they're, they're, they're able to work in parallel. Um, and they have what's known as columnar storage. Now, this is a, uh, a technique that data is stored in columns, uh, primarily, rather than rows, um, which is great for analytical queries, uh, time series queries, and makes it really easy to uh, save quite a bit of I.O. Um, in these types of uh, analysis functionalities. Um, and you can grow up to two petabytes. Uh, compressed, um, which is uh, quite a bit of data. Um, so there, there's some scale numbers there, and you can get started, like I said, for just 25 cents an hour. So good value, um, a good structure to do, you know, very high, highly performant uh, data processing and analysis. Go ahead and click forward, please. And that's all that I had on Redshift. So I'm going to jump into the uh, chat. Um, if you have questions about Redshift or AWS in general, I'll be answering Q&A um, while the other folks are talking. Uh, so thanks so much, and I hand it over to Tableau. Hello, and uh, thank you for uh, passing it over here. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? So to explain what Tableau is for those who have not been able to interact with it, Tableau uh, is a visualization product, which so it will be able to bring data in and very easily look at data. Um, we have a mission set statement here at Tableau, which is we help people see and understand their data. Now, on the surface, it sounds pretty uh, simple, but um, as we look at it, it is really much deeper. So our focus here at Tableau is really to help when we say help people, and when we say people, we mean absolutely anyone in the organization um, see and understand their data. And we do that by making uh, Tableau very easy to use. And so it has drag and drop functionality that um, literally once you attach to data, um, you will be able to drag it out into what we call a palette. It'll begin to build charts. Um, and you can then begin to play with those charts to really understand uh, what it is that you're looking at. So, uh, you know, for example, uh, as mentioned, we do connect to Amazon Redshift. We see a lot of customers using that as a platform to store data. And we see a lot of customers that use Alteryx to help clean and repair data um, that they're using. Uh, and so once uh, it is up in Amazon and, and ready to use, uh, Tableau can get connect there, bring that data down. Anyone in the organization uh, can do that. 
And obviously you can set up rules and, and process to make sure the right people are seeing the right data. But the benefit of Tableau versus really anything um, out in the market is that you're able to uh, really explore the data. And we talk about the unknown unknowns of, of, in Tableau. So it helps you see those things that uh, you may not see in, a, in other situations and, and be able to really discover things about your organization that uh, can help uh, provide a roadway uh, that's more beneficial than maybe the one you're on. So it allows the frontline people to go get data, understand what's going on uh, with their data, and ask questions. And those questions lead to uh, true insights. So uh, next slide, please. And we keep it simple. Uh, there's really two products at Tableau that we uh, sell. And one is Tableau Desktop, and the other one is Tableau Server. Now, Server comes in a couple of flavors, and I'll explain that. And, but Tableau Desktop is where uh, a, someone would author a workbook or a dashboard um, within Tableau. So uh, installed on your desktop, very easy to use. In fact, you can go to Tableau.com Tableau and download a free copy uh, for a period of time to play around with Tableau. Uh, I highly recommend that you do that if you haven't experienced it. And then once you build those workshop workbooks and those dashboards, those dashboards and workbooks can be published up into Tableau Server. Now, as I mentioned, there's a couple of flavors. And, and from a an, uh, cloud perspective, uh, we uh, try to meet you where you are. In other words, we try to make sure you have enabled what you need um, uh, or your, the way you're wanting to go to market uh, with, with your visualization tool. Um, first, we have Tableau Server. Tableau Server is a, uh, can be installed on premise, number one, but um, it is certified to be able to uh, be put into, um, uh, in, say you're able to put it into Amazon as well um, and use it uh, as a hosted, hosted solution in Amazon. Uh, third option is to use Tableau Online. If you don't want to, uh, you know, if you want us to manage the infrastructure and upgrades, we can also uh, offer a way where you can use Tableau Online to be your, uh, your sharing mechanism. Uh, we do have the ability to push those out to um, uh, push those visualizations out to uh, 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 mobile as well. So your your phones and your tablets uh, can be received as well, and you can do all the interaction um, that you can do on Tableau Server on those mobile units. So um, what all in all, Tableau is a way to uh, see and understand your data that that you have, and um, and we look forward to uh, what we have here with Marketo. So I'll let, uh, um, let you move forward from here. Great. Thanks, Todd. Uh, so this, uh, my, my name is Tim Chandler. I, I work at Marketo, and I've been there for a little over a year. And uh, the thing I really want to discuss with you over the next uh, 20 minutes or so is really, you know, you can go to the next slide, um, is the whole challenge uh, of what's really happening and what really was presented to me a little over a year ago when I came to Marketo. Um, you know, on the very surface, it was the, the challenge when I talked to the CXOs and, and many other line managers in the company, it was, we can't see our data. We need to understand a better, a better view of what's going on and when two people from different parts of the organization come to us and show us a chart, the numbers should match. I mean, pretty simple concept. And hey, Tim, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm so sorry, but can you speak up a little bit for your, you suddenly gone very quiet. Oh, really? <laughs> oh okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, is this better? It's a little better, but it could be uh, louder. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, just going to hold the mic near my face. Okay. Um, so the... But, you know, the challenge on the surface was seemed very simple. We have some data, we want to see what's going on, and we want to see it consistently. However, there's, um, as probably many of you are kind of aware of, this is really just the tip of the iceberg. If we go to the next slide. The, the challenge is not for us to create a bunch of charts, but it's to get the business people involved in understanding their data to create the charts themselves. Um, it, you know, it's one thing to go out and actually create a chart that someone has asked for, but it's much more powerful if you can empower people in the business to actually create the chart that they want. They have a much more intimate 
understanding and, and knowledge of not only what they need today, but what they need tomorrow. If we go to the next slide, it gets even more complex because we're not talking about one business person. We're talk, talking about several business people across many different organizations. And they're grabbing data from many different disparate areas. And they're creating many charts. And it's not about what we see today, but it's the sustainability of these charts and the trustworthiness of these charts as we go on. So the challenge, although it may sound really simple at the beginning, it's a pretty tough challenge as we go down this, the, this path. And I just wanted to kind of frame the challenge that we had getting into this, because if it was simple, uh, it would have been a long, done a long time ago. So if we look at the next chart, uh, the next slide here, really the, the thing that I first set up um, and this is like probably a, a couple months into this, is I set up a, a something I call Mavericks, that it's a data pipeline. And simply put, it's a way of grabbing disparate data in the cloud and wherever it happens to be, and then it pulls it into three separate stages. The first stage is basically the ETL stage of where it's massaging, blending, uh, prepping the data. The second stage is where it's actually putting it into a relational database where it makes it a lot easier to get it, uh, get the data later on, such as historical data in Salesforce.com. And then the third stage is actually creating it in the format and presenting it in Tableau in the business terms. So, the, you know, the magic is this is really the magic of, the, of this presentation or what's happened over the last year. And there's a lot going on on this, this page. So I'm going to talk about it a bit more. So on the left-hand side, uh, and this list keeps growing every month, we've been working in Alteryx to actually go in and grab many of these different areas. Now, some of these areas like Salesforce.com, there's a, a nice little tool. You can go in, put your credentials in, and boom, you're pulling out data right away. A lot of these, though, you're having to use um, AP, REST API tools uh, to actually go in and grab this data in a secure fashion. Now, when it first comes in, that first block that we're looking at here, it says AWS. This is all AWS in this yellow box here. As it first comes into this environment, this box is crunching over 80 data flows every day. It's, it's essentially refreshing and reaching out and doing incremental and full loads based on the, the business requirements all the time. So if I was to look at that server right now, it's busy, it's got a couple things in queue, it's whizzing away, making things happen. As it goes into Redshift, um, only certain jobs are actually going to go into Redshift. So for instance, Salesforce.com, every night at 11 o'clock, I go snapshot about 50 fields what's, you know, what, what's uh, happening in our sales funnel, basically. And you take those snapshots over the last year and a few months now, you can actually do things like pipeline velocity and many other cool things. And this was, again, simply just going in with Alteryx and saying, okay, read this table and save it in Redshift. Let's do it again tomorrow. The last part here in more detail is really making sure that we save this as a data extract that is in Tableau's native format. And that really enables the uh, development of the dashboards and the presentation of the dashboards to happen much faster. So you can kind of see it's a pretty simple concept. It's all secure. It all flows from basically left to right. And it's been up and running for well over a year now. And we've had great success in this. It's been very simplistic. You notice there's no MDM here because we're able to actually go back into the, um, the, the, the sources and actually, you know, if there's a, a single data source that's going to be responsible for something, then we make sure that the business and IT understand that, you know, for instance, uh, Workday, that's going to be the definitive um, set of what we're, we're looking at from an a, uh, employee point of view of hire, hiring. Uh, and that then transcends through the whole um, 
data modeling that we set up here. Let me go on to the, the next slide here. So I mentioned there are like 80 workflows that are going. Probably one of the n most nearest and dearest data workflows is the opportunity workflow. This is one that a lot of the sales ops people are looking at, a lot of the finance people are looking at. And I know you can't read the little widgets, but I just thought, you know, a little train, train track kind of view of what's going on is kind of interesting. Because you start off on the left, it's basically just reading in um, five different tables from salesforce.com. And as it goes from left to right, it's basically um, pruning the data, fixing up the data, and it's doing a couple, those gray boxes are basically uh, blending the data together. The green boxes are creating US currencies. And then you've got a few other boxes. You've got oranges, and you've got a couple of other boxes that have collapsed. And this is where the business has come to, to us and said, oh, we want to be able to see these extra fields that will make Tableau a lot easier for us to create. So what one of the decisions we made off very early in this is that we are not looking to create Tableau experts. We are looking for people in the business that are going to be doing Tableau work, but we want to make it as easy as possible. And easy as possible means creating the best data modeling that's possible. So when it's there, they can do more drag and drop and less calculations and less uh, you know, things like uh, level of detail. So creating the right data model makes, speeds that up. So as you finally go over to those far yellow boxes on this slide, that's where it's actually publishing out. So it's interesting. You know, it starts off with reading, pulling in, massaging, enriching, and then pushing out into Tableau. And this whole, whole process um, takes oh, about a half hour. And we run this periodically during the day to refresh this. And it's interesting, there are other data workflows that will take data from this workflow and it further enrich it and create it for other parts of the organization. The nice thing is that we've got multiple, we've got many, many people using this data set. So when it comes time to doing reports, the numbers match as we go around the company. If we go to the next slide, this is not to say there aren't challenges out there. And really, the next few slides, I'm going to talk about the data challenges that we had um, and, and the things that I think that uh, anyone's going to run into as we see this happening. So the, fir the first challenge we had is when we started to see uh, where all the data was coming from, um, you know, we had to start building out our own REST APIs um, and really developing that expertise in-house and working with Alteryx to create this. So there's many different connectors that exist today. And this is a picture of some of them. But the one that's probably the most important and the one that you'll probably, um, you know, come to, to know the best is the one at the center uh, bottom. And this is the download tool. And it basically allows you to insert REST API code into it and allows you to suck out where um, data from whatever source you're looking at. Um, it's proven to be very reliable. Um, it really um, got, made this happen uh, in many different ways, and it's also been proven to be very secure. Um, so, you know, generally, uh, some coding up front, some custom work, um, and you typically have that conversation with vendors but when you start to say, hey, can I have a REST, you know, REST API uh, access and credentials, um, the kind of that, uh, that deer in the headlight look from some of the vendors. But then as you go through and talk to the right people, you're able to get that. We go to the next slide, please. Thanks. So the, the next thing is not really about technology. It's really uh, understanding what the business objectives are. Um, you know, so you can go look at some data and you can kind of come away with it and going, oh, well, if we just take this data that they're using in Excel spreadsheets, grab it from the right sources, automate it, and push it into Tableau, job done. Not at all. You've really got to be able to understand how the business is using that data. And in many cases, when they pull up an Excel spreadsheet, they're really only touching on the, uh, you know, the tip of the iceberg with this. So it's very important to develop a relationship with the business, understand what they're trying to get at, what are the insights that they're trying to understand of their business, 
and then start to develop data that makes Tableau easier to use over time. And this only, this, you know, this is not a uh, quick, quick type of process. This is something that comes with iterative conversations with the business over time. Next slide. So kind of building on the last one, but the, the most important aspect, I think, uh, is once you start to understand more and more of what's happening with the business objectives, you have to translate that into a data model. Um, you have to better understand what they are trying to accomplish, what the types of charts they're looking for, uh, what are the answers that they're really trying to see. And as you build this out into a Tableau extract, you're kind of looking in two directions. You want to make sure that the business has what they need, but you also want to make sure that when you have multiple business groups looking at data, that it, whenever possible, they're looking at the same data uh, instance. You want to cut down on the, the chatter or the, the division of data in the back end system. So this tool um, created by Alteryx to publish into Tableau is pretty much uh, at, at the end of probably 50, 60, 70 percent of all the workflows we have. And at the end of the day, uh, we have probably about uh, 12 core uh, data um, extracts that are up, updated every few hours in the system uh, being used by the business today. Go to the next slide, please. So those were the data challenges that we're primarily running into. If I had hours more, I could probably talk, talk and talk to the sunsets on that. But, but those are kind of the highlights. I'm really now shifting from data challenges to more around the business challenges um, that are happening. And let me tell you how we approach this at Marketo. So I've talked about these data models in the lower left-hand orange uh, circle there. The, the challenge now was, how do we get individuals across the company to drive adoption of charts and, and dashboards and move away from Excel? Our goal is not to get away from Excel, but to move into an automated process so people aren't doing the, the, the dive and catch every month or every quarter. Um, so we're able to automate as much as we can. So what was done very early on is we identified people in each of the organizations. So the partner organization, we had Jane, uh, we had Catherine and legal and so on and so forth through the organization. And depending on which organization we were looking at, uh, we really looked at the skill sets that each person brought to the table. Uh, we did not go out looking and saying, hey, you're a data steward and you're going to have these roles and responsibilities. We did not approach it that way. We really looked at it from, hey, how can we make your life easier? And let's look at a way of making that happen for you. So it became a very personal uh, conversation with people. Um, but at the end of the day, as you start to evolve into this relationship, it's really about them understanding their data, you having a broader understanding of the data across the company, and then being able to supply and quickly get them to where they need to be in automating dashboards. So let's go to the next slide, please. So there's, again, I kind of break this down to three challenges. The first thing I talked about was identifying the, the business owners that were going to help make this happen. And I know in the traditional sense, I know that in some larger companies, we, you know, it's kind of gone this very structural way of having data stewards and giving them roles and responsibilities. But I really don't believe that that's a, 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 a key way of making that happen. I, I believe that it's better to look for people that are having pain with Excel. That, that you know, you I don't know if you've run into it, but I have, where you, someone has literally got macros and VLOOKUP tables and all kinds of stuff going on. And if you ask them to explain it or where it's documented, they kind of look at you with that, that stare that you recognize, no, this is their tribal knowledge, only they understand this. So that's a huge opportunity to really understand and develop a way that they can legitimize the processes in the background and to, to make this happen 
in a much more automated way. So these people over time become more of data champions. But again, it's really looking at the people in the groups, knowing what they bring to the table, and putting it in personal terms of how you can actually drive and make things happen with them. Let's go to the next slide. So here's something I think that's really interesting from uh, a training point of view. I know if you, you go out there and you, you uh, engage different groups or companies and, and say, hey, I want to train people on Tableau. Uh, there's this, um, you know, I, I've seen this where they want to create experts out of people. They want to get them creating charts and they want to talk about line of detail and they want to talk about calculations and they want to get into all this stuff. And usually, you know, my opinion, that is not the way to go on this thing. You want to take people's data that they are using. In other words, you need to have the data up and running and ready. And you need to put that in an environment where that person is going to look at their data and they're going to ask questions on how to make their dashboards. And that's the connection you need to do in training. You need to be able to show them their data and how they create their dashboards. It's, it's interesting looking at sample data, but it really clicks when they see their sales, their territory, and they want to know how do they do territory planning for the next six months. The questions get really interesting and they progress down a path that makes it much more uh, you know, sustainable and, and drives more adoption. So I would, you know, and what we have is we've really tried to stay away from teaching anyone about data blending, level of detail, or any advanced charts. Uh, those things will come to, to people who want to continue on. We're not going to hide that from anyone, but we're not going to go out there and really, um, when pe inter people are introduced into Tableau, we're showing them how to solve business problems, not how to be experts in Tableau. So that that is, I think, a very key part because most of the people that are going to be creating these charts have other day jobs. And it's hard for them, even though they wish to get into these things more and more, it's just, you know, not practical in many cases. Let's go to the next, next page. So probably one of the biggest challenges overall is getting company-wide ratification of data. And there's three different ways I look at this. Is one is when someone in finance is actually doing a calculation or when someone in sales office is doing some other aspect of data and they're building something out, it's more in your interest to have that done in the back end by Alteryx as it pushes it into an extract versus actually creating that custom field in Tableau. And here's why. If it's a real valid field that pe many people are going to be using in the company, you want it to be a standard and you want to drive that uh, as a standard across the company. And there's no better way of doing that than just making sure it shows up in everyone's dashboard and you don't have to, to advertise that calculation. Now, I know there are ways around that in Tableau, but again, let's keep it simple. The second thing is uh, sharing and using common standard fields. And that means taking away the fields or not ever showing the fields that just aren't um, being used in the company. And this is a huge advantage over what we see in Salesforce.com reports. A lot of people are using a lot of different fields uh, in Tableau. Now you can govern this a lot better and you can drive things into the mix uh, and create uh, greater standards across the company. So the, the, the other aspect of this is really um, categories. Now, a lot of people uh, in, in the Marketo will look at the same number, but they'll slice it in different ways. And these slicings are, are basically different categories of how they look at it. And being able to make sure that those categories are understood and are company-wide, and that finance, sales ops, partners, and everyone is using those same categories, again, is a huge win. And this is something that we're able to push through and work with people in the business uh, with the Tableau. So let's go on to the next slide. So I've, I've presented a lot of the data challenges and the, the, the dashboard challenges that we've gone through. 
the, the thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about now is that the, the real magic in this whole thing is how do you go from engaging, you know, we just talked about, you know, do you have an idea in a shower to getting into production? Okay, well, I'm changing it a little less sexier. I'm going from business requirements to production. And you need to be able to do this in a pretty fast pace. And, and if you really think about this, you're going to engage someone in the business, and they've usually got a fair bit of excitement of, this is cool, I want to get my dashboards up, I want to make it happen. Uh, and you need to be able to engage them in such a way that you're able to pull, modify that data. If there's something wrong with the data, if there's something that needs to be added or changed, you need to be do, able to do that quickly and then get that into production as quickly as possible. If there are delays of weeks, then the excitement goes down with the business, their, their shift and their attention goes into other things, and it jeopardizes the adoption of what's happening. So it's really important to be able to go in, see the business requirements, change, you know, hours later go in and change something and also create a different pipeline and then push it into production or into a beta environment and then be able to come back to them and go, hey, is this what you're looking for? Is this what you're looking for? And be able to quickly get it to that pace where they're going, yeah, that's exactly what's going on. Great, I can replace this. So speed is still a very important aspect of this to, to maintain that excitement with the business. Let's go to the next slide, please. So what's happened at Marketo? So this, these are some of the charts that we've actually seen happening inside the company. Um, and basically, I've got a red arrow here. And it points to where we actually launched um, Mavericks. So Mavericks was running in the back end, working with many different business groups. And then at one point, I was saying, OK, the data is locked in. It's been ratified. We're seeing that it's uh, you know high quality. We're ready to go make this thing happen in production. And that's where we saying, saw, and each one of these colors represents a different organization in the company. So you can see up until this red arrow, we were seeing moderate growth across about five different departments. But then when the data became available in the back end, the adoption really started to to take a totally different trajectory. And we started to see more and more organizations come on board. So the you know, really exciting story that I, I love is that being able to have this data pipeline in the back end and being able to have this humming away day in and day out, it's the, it's the foundation of being able to deploy Tableau and to get it into the hands of people and to get them to start publishing across their departments. So we're seeing an uptick um, in the production or the publishing of these dashboards and also the usage of these. Um, and we went from uh, named user licenses up to a whole site license uh, up about a quarter ago. And we're taking advantage of that nicely now. Next slide, please. So um, the next few slides are really just you know, these are just some of the snapshots of what the teams have done. So this isn't me, this isn't IT credit, this is the business actually taking the data and going out and making the stuff happen. So this was our, there was a whole set of slides in here, of territory uh, planning. Apologies for the grayed out areas. Um, can't, can't share some of the intimate uh, data that's in here, but you kind of get a flavor that all of a sudden, now that they're able to see where our existing sales are in certain capacities and what types of industries it were, that we were able to look at, see where we need to actually do our sales territory planning for the following year. Next slide. Uh, finance is a, a series of dashboards that are out there. Um, they're able to see a lot of this in Excel spreadsheets, but it was typically uh, at the month end um, or you know, you know, once a quarter they would see these things. Now they can see it up to date every few hours. So not only is it a lot less work, but they're seeing it when they want to see it now. Next slide. Uh, 
So partners, again, they were doing the dive and catch with a lot of Excel spreadsheets, and we were able to create a uh, extract that focused just on partners, uh, and they were able to create this. Again, this is an IT creating it. This is people in the business creating these charts. Next slide. And likewise with legal. Uh, we're actually continuing to do a lot of stuff with them. With um, as soon as they recognized that we could do automated pulls through APIs uh, into their back end systems and pull it right into Tableau, they got very excited about this because again, they're not having to do the dive and catch. Next slide, please. So um, there was a lot of really good feedback, but the one piece of feedback that I really uh, liked the most was that it's saving just this one department 25 hours a month. Uh, so I talked about the dive and catch. There's a lot of people inside the company that were actually using Excel, um, you know, and having to do a lot of manual work in that. And once we're able to automate these pools through the APIs using Alteryx, groom it, pull it in, and push it into Tableau, and then have Tableau have the business create those those dashboards, boom, it was all automated. They could sit back and everyone could see exactly what they needed to see. So um, it's kind of going from a manual to an automated world, uh, but the real trick here is we've got the business to really drive and make this happen. So next slide, please. So, you know, if I leave you with any any kind of feeling today, the really interesting thing I think is that IT is not around developing out these dashboards. We're about enabling people and making it as easy as possible to deploy these dashboards. We want to promote people doing things themselves in a self-service way. Um, you know, we are basically trying to be very uh, responsive to the data needs. Uh, when they need that little hint or a little um, suggestion on how to make the charts better, we're there, but largely we want them to be autonomous in creating those Tableau dashboards. Um, we in IT own the infrastructure, we own the governance, and we own the security. Less sexy stuff, but without that stuff, nothing else is going to happen. So with, with that, I'd go to the next slide and say, uh, you know, any questions? Thank you, Tim. That was definitely an excellent presentation and a great explanation of how the three platforms work together while in furthering your analytics practice. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the questions that we've had come in. So um, we have one question here. Is Alteryx being used by end users after they view Tableau reports? And if so, for what purpose, i.e. post-ETL analysis or data cleansing? Oh, okay. Um, so today, I'd say probably 90% of all Alteryx workflows are IT originated, talking with the business. Um, in finance and a little in product marketing, we have people who are interested in Alteryx. Uh, and we've created something called Alteryx in a Box, where we've created a virtual PC in AWS. We've set it up with Alteryx. It's all set up. We've provided a copy of static data um, in that environment. And we've given them some basic training and say, go, go, go play with this. Go see what you can actually do. If there's stuff that you need help with, you know, it's, it's basically an experimental sandbox for the business to go uh, look into. And if there's some good ideas that come out of that, we will take those, we will put them into production into the Alteryx uh, Mavericks uh, data pipeline. Uh, the, 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 you know, the real challenge here is that we're not looking for more workflows, we're looking to streamline the workflows we have. So if there's a workflow we have today that 20 people are happy with, if we can get that to modify that ever so slightly so 25 people can use that, work, that data workflow, um, you know, that's much more interesting to us than, than creating a separate new workflow. Perfect, thank you. And how long did it take you to set up this architecture at 
um, Mercado. So it took probably uh, a month to set up the architecture with two or three data feeds. So this would be Salesforce.com was the very first one. Uh, Oando, our exchange rate, uh, was the second one. And Coupa, I think, was the third. Uh, so those three, uh, pulling that data into Alteryx, into Redshift, and then into Tableau, that whole thing took about a month to set up. The further re refinements of adding more and more workflows, adding more and more sources, and all that, that was another four or five months. And even today, uh, for instance, um, we're seeing more, uh, for instance, Jive is a data source that we want to get into um, and start reading and writing into. So this, this environment just continues to evolve. Uh, there's a new data source probably being added every other month. Thank you for that. And where in the process did you have to manage cleaning the data, i.e. any duplicates, invalid data range, data exceptions, et cetera? Oh, wow. Uh, so this is the, the dark work that happens. It's, uh, if you do it perfectly, uh, no one cares about it. And if you don't do it exactly right, everyone just shakes their head. So um, this, this happens right up front in Alteryx. Um, also, a huge part of this is understanding the, what the data really is. So, you know, a lot of times someone will come back and say, well, hold on, this data is wrong because I'm seeing nulls with business units. And you, you, know, you spend time, you go in and you look at the data and you understand why it's, it's, it's actually that way. And it's really more of understanding the data at that stage. And, it, and it, does the data model need to change? Maybe, maybe not. Um, you know, so there's understanding the, the business model. Cleaning up data, like for instance, uh, our leads data, um, there's no um, set drag downs. It's all free forms. So we have macros that we've created that go in and do huge cleanups of countries, of addresses, of names, of email addresses. I mean, there's a lot of uh, basic cleanup that happens in data like that. With our opportunity data and things of that nature, uh, a lot of times we're not in the business of trying to uh, change the way people use Salesforce.com or other applications, but we will create reports that show where attention needs to be applied to improve the quality. So it's more around shining a light on issues as opposed to going fixing them uh, when we're looking at reports. Great. And has management noticed the difference between groups using the Mavericks uh, Alteryx in a box solution versus groups that are not adopting it? Um, yeah, so pretty much everyone is adopting it across the company. Um, so, you know, people don't go asking for Mavericks, they go asking for Tableau in the company. And when that starts to happen, they then start to ask, where is this data coming from? Can I rely on it? And when we say, oh, yeah, well, finance has been using this for eight months. And sales ops has been using this for three months. So this is the same data that they're reporting up to the VPs right now. Um, so there's a lot of confidence around that, and people are really looking to that as um, they're looking at it as, as a way of making sure that they're getting the right numbers now. Thank you. And can you describe the reliability of this architecture? Any issues in maintenance? So. Um, I'd say over the last 14 months, this has been running. Um, it's only probably had two hiccups, and each of those hiccups were about four hours. Um, so there are reports on reports, and one of those reports is when did this stuff last get updated? Um, the, uh, when we originally started this whole process, we actually did a lot of the development on the production system. Um, big no-no when you're scaling out, right? So we hit a certain point where we said, okay, we need to create sandboxes. So um, there are sandboxes for Tableau, there are sandboxes for Alteryx, 
and things got tested into these environments before they go into production. So the architecture slide I showed you is actually there's some sandboxes um, that could be sent. You could kind of view those behind the existing boxes we have today. So I thank you. I will wait for a response and see what the individual asking says. Uh, another question we have is, can you provide an estimate on how much volume of data I am assuming you are analyzing? Um, well, there's the, the key areas of data that we're looking at are in, inside our company are op, uh, opportunities data that is blended with user data, accounts data, exchange rates, and product data. Um, that is in the vicinity of probably only around a terabyte of data that we're looking at each day that we're, we're massaging. Uh, when we start to look at our leads and our accounts, uh, we are looking at vastly more data. We're looking at, oh wow, um, hundreds of millions of, of, uh, of rows, and these rows are incredibly wide. Uh, we're talking six, seven hundred fields. Um, so that that is a challenge. The the, the, the approach there with with that is to really understand what are the, the most important fields, what are the the criteria on how we're going to pull data and push it through our uh, Mavericks pipe data pipeline. Um, when we look at other data sources, they're relatively small. You know, exchange rates, um, very small piece of uh, data that we're looking at only you know weekly. Um, there's several other in there with finance and, and all that. Again, they're, they're we're talking in the, the hundreds of megabytes in most cases. Um, usually. You know, nothing ever too big. You know, the one thing I think is, is interesting to call out is that you know, we have just one server running all of this in Altix. Uh, it's got two parallel processes that can run at any period of time. We noticed that um, if we use uh, APIs all the time, grab. Sorry, Kim. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm getting a few uh, remarks saying that folks are having trouble hearing you again. Just oh. wanted to jump in. Okay, apologies for that, sorry. So the, the, the one thing I think is worth noting is that when we looked at all of the Alteryx workflows that are running, uh, the ones that take the longest time to run are the ones that are doing these API calls. Um, and if anyone's done API, REST API development, you know you can typically only grab about a thousand fields at a time. So if you're grabbing a few million rows and you're doing it a thousand at a time, that's going to take a while. Um, one of the, uh, the um, things that has changed with many vendors out there is that they're recognizing that this is a limitation and they are creating ODBC connectors uh, or database connectors that we can go out to and grab. And instead of taking a, an hour or so to read data, it could take seconds. So we were migrating on some of our slower workflows from REST APIs to these ODBC connectors um, and taking that data and we're just pushing it into Redshift as quickly as we can and then doing what we want to do with it when we get it there. Thank you. And I will take one more question uh, since we are coming up on the top of the hour. But how did you track metrics and show quantifiable metrics to stakeholders? For example, huh. the number of data sets cleaned up and how it impacted business, uh, impacted the business line. Okay, so okay, I'm going to take that and kind of I'm going to cut that in two parts. Um, so one of the first things we did is we we wanted to have a baseline on this whole environment. So there is a set of Alteryx, Tableau dashboards that we've created that actually monitor all the data usage and all the Tableau usage. And we've done that right from the beginning, so we have a really good understanding of who, who's logging in, who's viewing what, and which data is being viewed. Um, that, that was really essential, setting that up. 
then the uh, aspect, I think, probably more to what the, the users or the person is asking here is how do you actually quantify and measure this? So you saw that one letter out there at the very end of my presentation that says they were able to save 25 hours a month. So one of the things that I did is I reached out to every uh, business owner that was actually going out there and creating these, and I'm asking them a set of questions. How many hours is this saving you? What are, what are your wins? What are, you know, so asking that once is not enough, right? Um, I've been watching and monitoring what they're using. When I see something, it ticks up, and I see 10 more users that are in there, I go, what, what's, what's going on there? And I, then I can get some conversation with the business, and they'll tell me that, oh, we've just been able to get rid of this Excel spreadsheet, and we're able to do this type of planning, which we couldn't do before. Great. I capture that. I report it back in so the CIO is understanding what's happening, that the, you know, there's a greater understanding of the business benefits of what we're rolling out. So it's really about maintaining a relationship with the business, asking the right questions, and pulling that back in, and then basically um, uh, making people aware of that in the IT crowd. Awesome. At this time, I'd like to extend a big, big, big thank you to Tim for presenting the Mercado analytics story, as well as David and Todd for the great information on AWS and Tableau. As a next step, please visit us at altrix.com backslash Tableau kit to download your 14-day free trial of the Altrix designer. With the kit, you'll get pre-built Altrix workflows that output to Tableau, making it that much easier to get hands-on experience with the platform. A follow-up email containing this URL will also be sent out to all webinar attendees as a follow-up. And with that, I'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Robin, thank you so much. And Tim and Todd, thank you so much as well. Just a reminder that I'll be sending a follow-up email by end of day Thursday with links to the slides, links to the recording of the session, and anything else requested throughout the webinar. So thanks, everybody. And again, as Robin said, we'll get this information displaying right now as well as in the follow-up email. And again, and likewise, thanks to our attendees for being so engaged in everything we do and asking so many great questions. We just love it. Uh, and we will um, hope to see you in the next webinar and hope everyone has a great day. Thanks, all.